Yo, it is February 19th, 2024 today. Even though we are not officially out of winter, it sure feels like spring here in the Phoenix, Arizona area. So, been very busy the last couple months pruning and getting prepped for spring. So while I've done specific videos on pruning in the past that you can check out and lots of other garden channels have as well, we'll take a look around the yard, see how the trees look post pruning and also some changes. I put in a few new fruit trees. So this winter I took a little bit of a different approach for some of the trees I really wanted to protect. I went all in and did a cold frame and a heater and all that and of course those trees look fantastic uh, coming out of winter. And I'll show you some of the trees where I didn't do that. Um, basically just let them go. No babying, no frost protection, just to see how they would do. Now with my yard, we only saw a week in January of cold, real cold, where it went below freezing. So between 32 and 26 degrees is what my yard saw. Um, only a few hours early in that morning that week was where those freezing conditions happened, so not a really long extended period. And what was nice was it wasn't back to back to back, mid 20s like I had seen a few years ago. So let's take a look. Inca Gold Plumeria, been in ground for eight years or so. This one I did frost protect. Did put a frame around it, so not surprising, it looks great. Tips are all green. So all of my pruning is done for the year. You can see the quince. Really not a whole lot goes into the quince, just lightening out the branches, um, getting those crossing branches cut out, and then lowering that canopy to around 12 feet. That's about all I do with quince. It does fruit on old wood, two-year-old wood, so you don't really want to go heavy pruning that tree. And it's pretty slow growing. So just some tips if you're growing quince. Figs I'm always aggressive with pruning because we get the majority of our crop on that main crop, the new branches that come out this season, not these old branches. This tree holds lots of grass, so you can see I do leave quite a bit of wood just because obviously I don't want to cut the grafts off. So here's an established graft of my Figo Preto. And you can see I leave, you know, just a few of the scaffolding branches. The Kahala Longin looks absolutely untouched. This was not protected at all. And I don't even see tip damage this year. And the, at the top of the, the branch here, we can see the start of some new growth. This plant will be pushing panicles soon. This was that curry plant that I put in in late fall. I did have a little shelter up, but I never ended up putting frost cloth over it. Um, curry is really pretty tolerant of our conditions here in the winter. You don't really need to protect them except for the first year. It really wasn't all that cold. We didn't get into those back-to-back mid-20s, so really was fine. And even this black sapote that historically gets really badly damaged in our winter, um, you can see some mild leaf damage, but nothing much. And also that's attributed to this white sapote that's providing coverage, which is absolutely full of bloom right now and was untouched by, by the winter. White sapote you never have to worry about in our winters, even with mid-20s. I did not see damage on this tree. This plant is closely related to citrus and it has similar frost tolerance. So if you're able to grow oranges, lemons, any kind of citrus, you're able to grow white sapote as well. I haven't done a rose tour in a little bit here, but probably we'll do that as we get deeper into spring. But you can see that the roses are not pruned back hard like many people will do around this time of the year. I actually will do that hard prune in early fall following summer when the roses really are beat up and have a lot of branches that need to go. I like to take care of all the disease, dead wood at that point, and then from there on out, they're able to really put on nice healthy growth. By doing that, I don't lose kind of the peak time for roses, which is early spring. Again, showed you that multi-grafted uh, fig tree. This is the LSU purple. 
I'm actually seeing that the buds are starting to swell on a lot of these cuttings, so that's exciting. We'll see these break bud probably in a few weeks here. Another change you'll notice is the Meyer lemon tree is gone. That was an established 10 plus year old tree in the ground and it has been reduced to a stump because I am reworking it. I'm going to be changing this lemon tree into an orange tree. And I have this cage around it to number one, protect it from the chickens bumping into them and also to put some sunshade over it because you don't really want direct sunlight on these scions uh, just so that they don't dry out as they're trying to heal. You can see the Anna apple is in bloom right now. One of the earlier fruit trees to bloom. And I leave it more or less in a bush form so you can see a multi-trunk on this one. It gets a lot of sunlight in the late afternoon and summer, so I want a pretty substantial tree here. So I do leave a bit more wood on it than most wood. Coming at the back, you can see the fig trees are all really shortened down to about three feet. Clearly a lot of lemons that need to harvest it process. This is my Eureka lemon, just coated in lemons which is another reason why I decided to rework that lemon tree. I just have too many lemon trees in the yard. This year is an experiment. I did try to keep my tomatoes going through winter, had frost cloth over the frame, and actually am getting in a lot of tomatoes at this point. So kind of nice to know that you can grow tomatoes here through the winter. Haven't been successful with that in the past because it got too cold and they really are not tolerant of frost. But if you protect them with a high density frost cloth, you will get them through. This is the new Fukushu kumquat. Really excited to try this fruit out. You can see they're quite large compared to the nagamis. Cranberry hibiscus, I was surprised, actually made it through the winter. It was actually blooming through the winter, so that's when it blooms is in the cooler time. Pretty little maroon colored flowers come out. And this is an edible. You can eat the leaves. So glad to see that I don't have to replant this and it can take our winters. This is my African Pride Atamoya, and you can see it did take damage to the leaves. Uh, this was one that was completely unprotected. It has a bit more shelter from the wind because of the bamboo nearby. But good to see that this does not need to be covered. Just cosmetic damage and it will push out new leaves as we warm up here. Similarly in this ice cream bean, just some cosmetic damage. Nothing major on this guy. I just pruned him back a little bit. Um, he was a little top heavy just so I didn't have any issues with the winds because we did have some pretty strong winds coming through here this winter and I didn't want any limb breakage so just topped it around five feet there. And hoping this will put on a lot of growth, but a year ago I planted this and it was a tiny stick and you can see just in a year how much uh, this trunk has sized up. So these grow quite fast, it's good to see. Here's another ice cream bean. This one was less established, only had about six months in the ground here. And with this one, it did have a lot more cold damage. The leaves actually turned brown on the tree within I would say two weeks after that event and they fell but you can see the tree is fine it's alive and it's pushing new leaves so ice cream bean are really tough so very pleased with that and looking forward to when this is going to grow up and be a big canopy tree for this area even though we could potentially have another frost i did go ahead and take this frame 
down that you can see here, it was over my plumerian and moved it over here. And moved it here because this will be the frame for shade for a couple new trees that replaced the Shangri-La mulberry. You can see the Shangri-La is gone. It was cut down. And I've planted two low chill cherries in its place in one hole. Uh, these are on dwarf rootstock. And on the right, we've got the Royal Crimson and on the left, the Mini Royal. Both of these are said to not require many chill hours, somewhere around 200 chill hours. They're supposed to be self-fertile, but if you have the two, that's just gonna increase fruit set and cross-pollination. I got these from Bay Laurel Nursery, and you can see they are both budding out, so that's good to see. And yes, I topped them really low. They're only about, I would say, a foot from the ground. So they were probably four feet tall when I got them in the box, but I want to have them more in a bush shape rather than high off the ground. And overall, cutting your fruit trees low to start them off is going to force a sturdy trunk system and strong scaffold limbs, which is what we want for our trees. Here we can see another ice cream bean, just like the other one, had some damage you know, cosmetic damage, this one actually held on to a few of its leaves. It too is putting on new leaves, so it's gonna drop those old ones and come out with more vigor. Just starting to get some bloom here on the deciduous trees. This is my Katie apricot. Uh, first few blooms coming out on it. So again, the, the winter was not all that, that bad on the plants. Even the red Malaysian that typically gets a lot of damage, you can see some cosmetic damage to the leaves just like usual, but really not all that bad. Barbados cherry didn't even blink, um, didn't lose any leaves, looks perfectly fine. The white and pink guavas just got some discoloration as usual on the leaves, they turn a little red, but you can see the inner canopy is green. Surinam, just like the guava, a little bit of redness on the leaves, not a big deal. This larger ice cream bean, Quite a fat trunk on that one. That had no cold damage, so assume this just was more sheltered over here. It does have a lot more windbreak between the bamboo, the hawkeronda, and the ficus there. I put up a poll, I uh, want to say a couple months back, about the Fuji apple tree, you know, that I just really haven't had success with and whether I should take it out. I ended up doing that. So in its place, we got this Flavor Delight Aprium. This is even lower chill than my Layacot that's right next door. But just thought this would be a good one. I love Aprium's really delicious fruit. And this one supposedly has won lots of taste tests and does really well in our climate. So again, I topped it. I just put some tape on the fresh wound so it doesn't dry out just because this is bare root may not need that, but just take that as a precaution. It has not broken bud yet, but I think it needs to be a little warmer. Even its neighbor here, the Layacot, has not broken bud yet. Here's another ice cream bean that looks in perfect condition, and it's because I did protect it. I put a cage around it and then frost cloth over it, all the way down to the ground, and you can see it kept it nice and warm and no damage to the leaves. And I only did that with this one because it was such a young tree. Not very well established in the ground. Drawing a new plant out. This is a an elderberry. There's a Latin name there. Sambucus nigra. Got this from Green Dreams. So elderberries are often planted in food forests. The berries are very medicinal, help with your immune system. So in time, this little bush will grow up and I'll eventually be able to harvest and preserve those berries. The vegetable bed's doing pretty well. Um, as you can see, it's kind of barricaded off. Initially, the chickens were jumping in here and it does look like they trampled out, you know, half my crop here on this side. 
Um, this side's doing pretty well, but I've got some beets going and also some heirloom tomatoes here. Again, these just needed some frost cloth overhead. They got a little bit of cosmetic damage, but pulled through winter pretty well. It's the pomegranate tree. This was one that I top worked several years back. So similar to that Meyer lemon, I cut this down to almost the ground. Basically just left up to about that section of the trunk and then used a rind bark approach graph to put on new varieties. So here's my pink ice. Still have not gotten fruit off the pink ice, but you can see it's a nice graft at this point. It's healed over that rootstock pretty well. We have dessert knee over here. This one over here is the Saudi. I have a Madavi Vasha and Jasarski Rosavi as well. So the main thing with the pomegranate is I just remove crossing branches, lighten it a bit, top it, because I don't want it too tall. This is about seven feet tall. And leave just my main scaffolds. Really don't need to do a whole lot with pomegranate. You know, shape it as you want. If you want a single trunk, multiple trunks, and that's about it. Mulberry row here. Uh, these are the Mauis, and they are already out. They are super early varieties. And there are little mulberries already on here forming. But these are loaded, so I am really excited to try the Maui mulberries. I've got four containers of those, and then we also have the Thai Dwarf, which is coming out as well with both leaves and mulberries. It's a little bit behind the Maui varieties. So very soon here, I will have mulberries to try. These are my prime arc blackberries. They are still asleep. Not seeing too much action here on the buds quite yet. No growth pushing, but those should come out of dormancy soon here. Coming up to the main subtropical area. These are two frames that were built last year. Both frames are about 10 by 10 by seven feet tall. They were wrapped in 2.5 ounce frost cloth all the way around to the bottom and a supplementary heat source put in. No issues whatsoever with the structure, with the winds, held up great. Having the bottom rail really helps with the stability of the frame and the way that I secure this so that it doesn't move with strong winds is that I use these J rebar hooks and they just you just pound them into the ground and then the J goes over it. That along with the weight prevents us from ever moving, even in 60 mile per hour gusts. Um, you can see all of the plants look nice and green, no damage. So it was well worth it um, for these young plants. Just recently also up potted a lot of the mangoes. It's so like the Sinclair is now in a 15 gallon, pretty good sized trunk. Pretty amazing growth considering this was a tiny seedling less than two years back. But all of the mangoes are looking good. Some of them look like they're about to push, you know, bloom very shortly here. This Kazar is pushing out new leaves. You can see the top there. It's gonna be panicles and leaves. So it was a bit of an effort to do all this, but uh, worthwhile if you've got a lot of plants to pack in to a space to consolidate them all here. Recently put in a mullish sapadilla in the ground here. This is a new addition. Just want to show the Mexican sunflower, uh, despite the cold, still has leaves, still is good to go, so it can handle our 
winters typically unless we get a really, really cold one where we have back-to-back -back 20s. Loquat seedling's doing quite well. We'll see how that does in the summer. The only thing that really looks crappy right now are the bananas, and that's not surprising. These will come back. The ones that were more insulated by the vetiver grass look better, more green. But the ones more exposed and the younger ones definitely have some damage to the leaves there. Additionally, the papaya. You can see the papaya, these Hawaiian sunrise have lost pretty much all their leaves. They've dropped, but they'll be just fine. Speaking of winter and damage, so you can see that the Royal Pointiana pretty much has lost all of its leaves. Still has some, but this is fairly typical for this tree. Really does not like freezing temperatures, but will survive once it's large enough like this. And typically, this will drop everything over the course of the next month, and then you'll start to see new shoots push around April time frame. This tree likes it quite hot where our lows are in the 60s for it to start pushing growth. So if your Royal Poinciana looks like this, don't worry, this is normal. So in fall, I did plant three Plumeria in the ground just to see how they would do in winter. And to my surprise, these were never protected, but they're in kind of a nice microclimate here with rocks all around them. They are defoliated, which is normal for Plumeria at this time of the year, but uh, I can tell there's no cold damage to them. So this experiment worked. So we'll see how these do over the course of the next year in the ground. All my container plants are back out around the pond, so the frankincense, these were all in the garage under suboptimal light, so they'll probably drop their leaves and then grow a new set of leaves. Plumeria, some of them didn't lose any leaves. But you can see the tips look like they're going to push growth soon. It's warm enough now for these. And this is my Florida Prince peach tree. Peach trees are probably the earliest to break buds, so it's got, you know, leaves coming out as well as bloom. Jamaican cherry was in the garage. Again, suboptimal light, so it did drop a lot of leaves despite having cold protection. But you can see it's starting to push new growth. And then my potted fig trees are already breaking bud. I'm just slightly ahead of my in-ground trees. Probably by about two weeks. That's a thermalito. Perigal ramata see a lot of bud swelling. Martinica ramata here. Mix in peace. The trees are really enjoying the weather right now. These uh, 70s for our highs, just kissing 80 degrees, and our lows in the 50s. Last year was tough on the plants. They had a really long winter. Spring was really slow to go. Uh, it held everything back. But this year is more normal, so I'm liking 2024 so far. Vast improvement over 2023. We should get a really good fruit set on our stone fruit, given that we got decent chill hours. As long as our temperatures, again, don't get into those mid-20s and hold on to that for a week straight, these plants are gonna do just fine on their own. They don't require frost protection. Coming into spring, a lot of my trees have now rooted in the ground, these younger trees, and I'm hoping they really take off. You know, a tree this size probably will triple or even quadruple this growing season. And so, number one, that's gonna be harder to frost protect next year. And number two, it's not really necessary because even if we do get frosty conditions and a top canopy gets damaged, it will protect that lower canopy from damage. Hope you enjoyed this walkthrough and update. Let me know if you have any questions. Happy spring and happy gardening.